This is Vern Venom Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. There was a cartoon I saw one time. It showed a little grade school girl giving an inspirational talk to her classmates. The subject is human relations, and she's saying, And so, when the world kicks you in the teeth, everything goes wrong, and life puts you down, always remember, someday, somehow, someone will come along who you can take it all out on. Is that how you deal with your vexations? By venting them on your family and co-workers? When you get knocked down, are you able to get up again? Peace, love, and brotherhood depend very much on tolerance and understanding between human beings. I was born and reared back in Kansas. And in the frontier days, there was a saying. They used to shoot first and ask questions later. Of course, they didn't get many answers that way. That's one major cause of hatred and of violence, the refusal to communicate and to understand another human being. If, as Jesus taught, we are to do to others as we would have them do to us, we must learn the ability to put ourselves mentally in the places of other people in order to discern the greatest good for others, for love is the desire to do good to others. A.J. Cronin has written, Peace on Earth depends not upon the pompous platitudes of the treaty makers, but upon the individual behavior of every single being upon the earth. It is your children and mine who must make it a better world. If we actually desire peace, we must be willing to work for it, dream for it, pray for it. Peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, in our nation, and peace in the whole world. There is a principle of psychology. Beware of what you think about. You will come to look like it. Beware of what you say, you will come to believe it. And beware of what you wish. If you persist long enough, you will get it. There was a certain little boy who got mad at all of his playmates. So he stood out there in the yard calling them bad names for a while, and then he yelled out, and if I've said anything I'm sorry for, I'm glad of it. But Jesus of Nazareth challenged humankind to fall in love with goodness to fall in love with the very will of God and seek to do the Father's purposes above all things upon this earth. Adelaide Case has written, You can do five things to promote peace on earth and goodwill among humankind. You can realize first that peace begins as a personal affair within the individual. Number two, you can remember that you are not responsible for the acts and attitudes of others, but only for your own acts and attitudes in the areas in which you live and have influence. Three, you must realize that peace has its price as well as war does. Number four, you can hold fast to faith that peace is possible. And five, you can support and strengthen the greatest of all peace potentials, which is religion. If you deliberately engage in cruelty and unfairness in your life, you're going to spend the rest of your life fighting a losing battle with God. Recently in Washington, D.C., the National Commission on Violence has said that television programs contribute to violence in America. With its constant portrayal of violence, the commission said, that's a quote, television is pandering to a public preoccupation with violence that television itself has helped to create. Violence on television, the commission reported, encourages violent forms of behavior and fosters moral and social values about violence in daily life which are unacceptable in a civilized society. End of quote. This National Violence Commission simply restated what the scriptures have said for centuries, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The trouble is it's when you're sticking out your tongue at somebody that a fly is most likely to land on it. And it's when you're striking out to kick someone in the shins, you're most liable to lose your own balance and fall down. Or as Jesus said it, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. In other words, to do to others as you would have them do to you is not only better for them, it is also literally better for you. Le Comte de Noy, in his book Human Destiny, wrote, Peace must be established by transforming man from the interior and not by erecting external structures. The source of all wars, he writes, the source of all evil lies in us. No outside protection will be efficient if the enemy cowering at the bottom of our hearts is authorized to live. J. Sherman Wallace wrote, Nations have no existence apart from their people. If every person in the world loved peace, 
then every nation would love peace. And if every individual refused to fight one another, nations could no longer fight one another either. Jesus of Nazareth, outwardly associated with publicans and sinners, yet lived a godly life because his inward heart was clean and loving. Judas Iscariot, by contrast, outwardly associated with the very noblest and the best of humankind, and yet he fell because his inner heart was traitorous, vain, and hateful. A person's outer environment is not nearly as important as his inner environment, the purposes and passions of the soul. No person with a full heart can have an empty life. Assimilate by living faith right now the living love of God for you. The fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, the fact this is one great family on this earth, and love your father God and your brothers and sisters in return. And this fullness of heart and soul will be yours. What is love? Love is inalienable goodwill. And what is goodwill? It is willing the good. It is deciding to bring worth and value into the lives of other human beings by serving them, by loving them, caring about them. Dr. Alfred A. Weinstein has written, You may think there's not much that any one person can do toward achieving world peace. Yet if every person who believed the ideas in the Golden Rule, the Sermon on the Mount, and the Ten Commandments would begin practicing them in his or her own small sphere, the combined effect would be world-shaking. A few years ago, this was around Thanksgiving time, one national magazine carried the picture of a family sitting at the dinner table. The young father was carving the turkey. The mother sat at the other end of the table. Between them were the two sets of grandparents, a little girl of about seven, a little boy of perhaps five. And then at the mother's elbow in a high chair sat a baby of approximately one year of age. The title of the article was the word togetherness, and under the picture ran this legend. She's too little to know about Pilgrim Fathers and Indians, but there's something pretty exciting going on that she does know about. She knows there's a special place for her at that big, beautiful table, that the fun and the talk and the belonging together warmth, even some of the turkey and cranberries, are for her, too. She knows that what is going on makes her a part of a whole big, wonderful family. She may not know the word, but she's beginning to get the idea, togetherness. That was the dream that Jesus of Nazareth held for this entire whole wide world of ours, that whether we recognize it or not, we are a family. And those who are spirit-born can live in love for everyone. And love is the greatest power in this universe. One time I heard a tall story about a place where it was so hot everybody took turns sitting in each other's shade. But that does represent one noble principle of human life. It's cooperation. We can simply accomplish more working together than we can working bitterly and angrily apart. And that is why it is of such fundamental importance that we begin to conceive of this planet as one great family, the family of God which it is, and you are a member in it. You are infinitely valuable. No two snowflakes are the same. No two fingerprints are precisely the same. Psychology is found. No two personalities are precisely identical. There is only one of you in all this universe of universes, and you are that one. No one else can do precisely what you can do in your career through the ages. No one else can be precisely who you can be. You are a special son or daughter of God. God only made one of you, and you are that one. And God loves you with a love that will not let you go. Whosoever will, let him come. I will in no wise cast out, says God. He calls for you, regardless of what you've done, regardless of your past, regardless of your present. God has a future for you which will be thrilling. You may not know what the future holds, but you can know who holds the future. God does. And God offers his will, his wisdom, his power for living every moment of your life. One world religious leader has written, there are ten commandments for bringing peace on earth. Number one, peace is always in God. God is peace. Number two, only men who bow their heads before God are capable of giving the world a true, a just, and lasting peace. 
Three, unite all honest people to bring closer the victory of human brotherhood and with it the recovery of the world. Number four, banish lies and rancor, and in their stead let truth and charity reign supreme. Number five, affirm human dignity and the orderliness of liberty and living. Number six, give generously of aid and relief, state to state, people to people, above and beyond all national boundaries. Number seven, assure the right of life and independence to all nations, large and small, powerful and weak. Number eight, work together toward a profound reintegration of that supreme justice which reposes in the dominion of God and is preserved from every human caprice. Number nine, God is the rock of human brotherhood and peace can never come to terms with the idol worshipers of brutal violence. And number 10, be prepared to make sacrifices for the achievement of peace. Jesus' two great commandments, again and again I reiterate, were love God and love people. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And secondly, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Listen to this. It happened in San Francisco. There was a store owner looked out of the corner of his eye and he saw a girl shoplifter running out of his store. She disappeared in her car, but he noted her license number. The police soon picked her up. It turned out that she was an 18-year-old unmarried mother with a prior conviction. And as her father tearfully told this shopkeeper, she could go to jail for three years on this conviction. But here was the result. That shop owner dropped the charges and hired the girl and that girl is now working for him as a sales clerk. Don't tell me the brotherhood of man is an idle dream it can never happen. Because it can. It can start in your life and mine and one day can win this world for peace and love and goodness. One thin dime can be held in front of your eye and block out the sight of the sun. No person, however, would insist that that little dime is larger than the sun. But the dime being nearer to the individual person has the ability to shut out the sight, even of the sun. Much of the disorder in families and in human society results from the actions of people who place their tiny personal interests ahead of the good of the whole. One must never seek to put private gain or advancement before the great good of God's great family. Dwight L. Moody wrote, if we cannot be a lighthouse, let us be a tallow candle. In the old times, people used to come to the evening meetings bringing their candles with them. The first one would not make a great illumination, but as more came, there was more light. Suppose all the people on earth today were burning with even a candle light. Would not God be all the more glorified? If we cannot be a lighthouse, let us be a tallow candle. That is well enough. If it is all you can be, be all you can be. Give your life. To God, without restrictions, without asterisks and footnotes, dare to lay your life before the living God and say, it is my will that yours be done and become the center of light and peace and love and joy a true son or daughter was born and created to be. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644-USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.